This lecture series is named in honor of Father John Marku of the Society of Jesus. Father Marku founded the Omaha de Flores Club on November 3, 1947, and is what now is the on the fourth floor of the administration building. This year marks the 65th anniversary of the club's birth. Father Marku, a member of the mathematics faculty, mentored the club through the 1950s and into the 60s, attracting students from Creighton and many other area colleges. Named after St. Martin de Flores, the patron saint of social justice, whose feast will celebrate on November 3rd, the club's objective was the realization of racial justice here in Omaha. And as we observe the Feast of All Saints today, we especially remember the humble and indefatigable ministry of St. Martin as he healed, comforted, and cared for the poor, sick, and enslaved around him. Within the communion of saints, he remains an example of charity and justice. Honoring St. Martin de Flores is what made the Omaha de Flores Club so remarkable. We recall the club's use of nonviolent but militant tactics several years before similar boycotts, sit-ins, and marches garnered headlines in the South, notably under the leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Before Dr. King and the civil rights movement achieved national and even international prominence, Father Marcou and the DeForest Club stirred consciousness, challenged racist, uh, racist attitudes and segregationist practices right here in Omaha. The reasons were concerned. The first is the silence of our faith leaders on the racial appeals in our public discourse. In my mind, not a single bishop has spoken out publicly about the racial, coded racial appeals that are happening in this election. And indeed, we have some situations where bishops have contributed to the poison discourse of youth that, are, that are present in our nation. There has been no naming of racism as an intrinsic evil in voter discernment. We hear a lot about the intrinsic evils of abortion and the intrinsic evils of same-sex marriages. Our summons given to us by John Paul II to eradicate every form of racism. Or as I put it in an interview recently, is there more to Catholic public identity than opposition to abortion and same-sex marriage? One can be forgiven for raising these questions and for thinking otherwise. 